Are you eating the tithe like Adam and Eve did? Are you spending the tithe on a boat? Hunting lease? Are you, are you wasting the tithe? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if you touch the devoted stuff, you're under a curse. So, a long time ago, I thought to myself, okay, Ed, you either bring the 10% to the house and the other 90% is blessed, or you play God and say, you know what? I'm going to do with the money what I want to do and live under a curse. Let me see. Blessing or cursing? I'll take blessing. I'll take blessing. And you wonder why your marriage is stoned? You wonder why your kid's future is stoned? You wonder why your career is stoned? You wonder why you can't get your head above water? You wonder why you don't have joy? You wonder why you deal with greed? You wonder why you all get messed up with envy? You wonder, you wonder, you wonder. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. You don't get it. Please hear me. God's the one that said that. Second greatest theme in the Bible, money. You can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. What if I discovered that 80% of you were pathological liars? Every time you talk, you just told something that was false. Well, I would talk a lot about truth-telling. I would just hammer truth-telling about God the truth, speak the truth in love. Be honest. What have I discovered? That 80% of you were smoking crack. 80% of you were on the pipe. Tell you what I would do. Man, I would talk about the dangers of drug addiction. I would warn you. What if I discovered that 80% of you were burglars. I would talk about money. I would talk about the law of devoted things. I would talk about the tithe. 80% of you are robbing God. 20% of Fellowship Church pays for everything. 20% pays for it all. We're just operating on 20%. Only 20% are bringing the tithe. Only 20% are living in the land of more than enough. And this is true all over the world. I gotta ask you, (laughs) serious. Why are you even coming to church if you're not bringing the tithe? Seriously, what what, what are you expecting? Just hang out at home, man. Play golf. Go, go somewhere. You don't need to be here. What, 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 what are you expecting, man? Are you crazy? You ain't gonna get anything. It's not gonna happen. You're spitting in the wind. The law of devoted things. What if I brought every man up here and had you give account? Of your wealth. What if I did what Joshua did? Anybody want to? Anybody want to do that? Come on, Sage, and talk about your finances. Anybody here want to talk about your devoted stuff? I want to help you get blessed. Now, hopefully, you understand when I say get blessed. I don't mean you begin to bring the divine portion to the storehouse and you're going to become a multi-squillionaire. I'm not saying that. Some of you will. I said some of you will. Think about it. God's going to build his church. What did Jesus say? I will build my church. Well, he's going to make a lot of us a lot of money. I'm talking about God. Because if he knows he can get it through us, he'll get it to us. 
But the problem is, God wants to bless a lot of you. You're in the Jordan River. In your floaties. Splashing around, thinking a mission trip will do it. Thinking another Bible study will do it. Thinking serving in the church will do it. Thinking prayer will do it. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. Show me the money. God said that thousands of years ago. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Hey, if you're a tither sitting next to a non-tither, this dude is robbing God. Also, this dude will rob you, so watch your wallet. Because if he'll rob God, he'll rob you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. God's not going to give it to you if you don't have a storehouse. You can't church hop, shop, bop, bebop, and expect God to bless you. Again, it's not going to happen. You're wasting your time, my time. You're taking up space here. Oh, I want to chase a blessing. Oh, I'm going to this conference. Oh, I'm going to this person. She'll, she'll bless me. I'm going over here. He'll bless me. I want to get blessed. I want to get blessed. I want to get blessed. I don't do that. Blessings are chasing me. Blessings are chasing me down, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't run somewhere to get blessed. Hey, don't take a snapshot of my life today and build a theology on me. Oh, no, 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 no. You look back 29 years ago when I was making $25,000 a year, at least now we're first married, broken down house and car, bringing the tithe. I make a lot more than that now, and I'm still bringing the tithe, more than the tithe. So don't take a picture of me and build a theology. You're just seeing the results of 29 years of faithfulness right up here on this stage. I'm telling you, man, this stuff works. And most guys are not man enough to step up and fight the war on wealth. You'll waste your energy watching some game. You'll waste your energy on some hunting trip. You'll waste your energy watching UFC or lifting weights or whatever. It's time to lead. Your woman wants you to lead. Stand up and be a man and bring the tide and see how God blesses you. You won't believe it. You have no clue. You have no idea. And you know what? If you don't like this, just don't come back. Because I'm preaching to you what the Bible says about money. And if you don't dig it, leave. And here's what's so sick about it. You will go to a Cowboys game in a billion dollar stadium. Watch a bunch of muscled guys run up and down a green field go-go girls with nothing on dancing all the liquor the alcohol the drunkenness the debauchery you watch little tony romo 55 million dollar contract throw a football i wonder who's paying for that hey hey hey, hey i wonder who's paying for that you. Some of you are like, I'm never coming back here. It's okay. What would happen though if we broke through Jericho? Because again, you can't get around it, you can't fly over, you gotta go through it, study the geography of the promised land. What if we broke down the walls? Because I'm simply saying, hey, I've broken them down, man. Come on in. It is awesome. What if we did that? What could we do? Cash for Lasso Ranch. Cash for all of our buildings. Cash. There's, we got so many dreams and stuff. Unreal. I don't care if you make 10000 a year or $100 million. You bring the devoted things to God. He'll bless the rest. If you don't, you're under a curse. It's as simple as that. And I've seen people cycle through here. I've had conversations with people, friends, here at Fellowship Church about the tithe. And they have smiled and got teary 
and they've robbed God year after year after year. And I can tell you some bad stories of where they are today. They ate the tithe. Don't jack with the devoted stuff. So what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You bring the first to God. Well, how do you bring the first to God? It's very simple. Lisa and I do this. It's all about the automatic withdrawal. Say it with me. Automatic withdrawal. I want every single person here, even if you don't fill it out, just act like you do. Okay? Just act like you do. Every single person, get one of these. At all of our campuses, Miami, you pick these up. Plain out, they're in the seat backs. Blue card, blue card, blue card. Now, if you don't have one of these cards, man, you're looking pretty foolish right now. I will pick a card up because we got security cameras that are awesome that you can't see. And we'll put this on YouTube. You know why I love to talk about this? Because I do it. I've been doing this man for 29 years. I cannot thank God enough. Am I saying your life's going to be problem free? No. But you know what leaders do, guys? Leaders look for a problem to solve, and that problem is usually a promotion to the land of more than enough. So guys, you're the leaders here, man. It's time for you to step up. It's time for you to step up. Your woman wants you to lead. You want to be a spiritual leader? How can I be a spiritual leader? Man? I just want to be a spiritual leader. I'm really wondering how to be a spiritual leader. Bring the time. Again, how many more people show up here? Uh, seriously, how, how do you guys show up and expect a blessing without this? <laughs> Wasting your time and God's time. So we're not going to do it anymore. We're going to bring it. And God's causing breakthrough right now. All right, fill this out if you would. Bank information. Your bank name? Johnny Doe. Tony Romo. I don't know. $55 million? Who's paying for that? Go-Go Girls? What? 80% of the stadium is wasted? Who's paying for that? I'll never get invited to a Cowboys game now. You know what? Jerry Jones needs this. Somebody send it to him. All right. Routing number, so does Mark Cuban. Routing number? Because we need to pray for both of them. They lost his geese. Routing number? I would tell him that too. I love when I have my back turned because people leave then. That's all right. That's all right. Routing number and account number. It's getting hotter than fish grease up in here. All of those trips to Miami, all of those days in Southern Florida. And while his church is only open one day a week, there is one place belonging to Young that is open 24 seven. Specifically, a condominium which Young makes passing reference to in this address to his congregation. Um, I have a condo. I have a condo. It's not paid for either, but I have invested in a condo. I have that. And this is it, Young's condo, a gated 2,600 square foot oceanfront condominium in Coconut Grove, Florida, which he bought in 2007 for $1.1 million. From his 16th floor oceanfront balcony, a spectacular view of the Dinner Key Marina, the largest marina in Florida. Also of interest to Young in South Florida, one of his admitted passions. Florida Keys, an epic day after the tarpon. In addition to the trips to Miami, the church jet took Young on a five-day trip to Cabo San Lucas, where fishing was on the menu for him and his attorney, Dennis Brewer. You know, the rooster fish lives here. You know what a rooster fish is? Man, I know you're on fishing. <laughs> <laughs> We asked the church for a list of its ministries. None was located in Cabo San Lucas. Add to that six trips by the church jet to the Bahamas, one to Anguilla, one to Belize, one to England. Again, when we asked for a list of foreign ministries, none of those countries was mentioned. The church jet also made several shorter trips to his hometown of Houston, to Austin, and to Gainesville. 
The jet made 10 trips to Tyler, just 100 miles away, where the church maintains a lodge and retreat. There were multiple trips to New York, at least two coinciding with his network appearances. Air travel usually paid for by the networks themselves. We talk about those priorities versus the commitments because so often they, they don't really sync up. Again, Young and the church have declined to answer questions about the jet's use and its cost to the congregation. According to Blue Star Jet Chartering Service, it costs $15,000 to charter a similar jet round trip from Alliance Airport to Tyler. From Alliance to Cabo St. Lucas, $35,000. From Alliance to New York, $50,000. And from Alliance Airport to Miami, $42,000. Multiply that by the 50 times the church jet has flown to Miami in less than three years, the cost of those trips alone would amount to $2.1 million. The lingering question, who picks up the tab for any personal travel and our fellowship church congregants unknowingly paying the price? Write that down. That's all right. We have a lot of churches of the blessed subtraction in the area. Go there. That's cool. They don't, you know, they don't really talk about this very much. So we'll get in your grill fellowship. I'm telling you, we will. Because God gets in our grill all the time. We will. We're a church that will challenge you, man. We're comforted by Christ, but uncomfortable for Him. It's not always comfortable to bring the tithe. But I'm telling you, you do it, and you'll live in the land of more than enough. Withdrawal options weekly. For Lisa and I, it's twice monthly. Uh, monthly, whatever. Write that down. Print your name. Sign it, email, etc. Now, Ed, I don't know my routing number. Ask your wife. Seriously, if you don't know it, some of you don't, just take it home and find the routing number out. And you can mail this into our business office or you can drop it in the plate next week. But, 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 but don't be delayed. I'm in debt. Tithe. Ah, man, it's just so difficult, these student loans. Tithe. What, what, God's going to show up in so many crazy ways, you won't believe it. There was a couple here in the first service from Houston. I've not seen them in... Years and years and years and years and years and years. Lisa and I were married. I was in school and seminary. Lisa was teaching. I was making about 19 grand a year, 20 grand a year. And they helped us buy our first house in Houston. I don't think it's an accident that they showed up today. That's generosity. I'm telling you, man, when you begin to tithe, over and above your tithe is generosity. Well, I tithe to a nonprofit. It's not the church. I tithe to a Christian school, not the church. I tithe to a missionary organization, not the church. I tithe to this university, not the church. I tithe to this person who works in ministry. It's not the church. It's not the church. Fill that out. After you fill that out, everybody wave it. Everybody. Wow, most of you are. That's good. More than 20%. Awesome, man. Awesome. You're sure your first fruits will go to the house. Now, when we pass the offering plate, in a couple of moments, just drop this in the offering plate. If you want to think about it, fill it out, pray about it. It's really, it's really a dumb prayer. You don't have to pray about tithing. That's a dumb prayer. It's already been said. Don't pray about something that's already in the book. What am I saying? Pray about it. There's no use to pray about it. Just do it. If you want to do it? Live under a curse. That's fine. I can go, man, I can give you a list of people. Oh, I've sat down and begged. Please. Please. You know what? God doesn't need your money. He didn't need my money. Your money. Oh, okay. No. He just wants us to live in the blessed place and to be the most effective people out there. And that's what he has for all of us. So, the math is pretty simple. Whatever you make, 10%. What do I do the gross of the net? What do you want God to bless? Gross or net? That's a good question. So, we do Gross. For us, again, again, I want as much blessing as possible in my life. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just money. Hope you hear. It. I'm blessed in ways money can't touch too. Good, not my marriage and my kids and opportunities and just be around, be part of the greatest church in the world. You can't even put a price tag on that. Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, God's taking care of us financially, but I mean, come on, man. It's more than that. I hope you know that. Wow. But some of you are gonna be rich because of what the future is for here. I'm not that smart, you're not either. God's just going to get it to you because he knows he'll get it through you.
with the greatest thing in the world, the church. So I put these in the plate now. We're going to receive our offering. It is time for us to bring the offering. So I want to challenge you to do that now.